this is a difficult session, I must confess. Uh, it's a session where we have 50 retail CEOs, builders of companies, those who have actually helped to be able to either build a retail network or build a brand or do both, or sometimes in India and sometimes internationally. Uh, what we are hoping to do is to be able to get each one of these people to speak. But when I say speak, it's not like a long five-minute speech. It's just a one-minute snippet. And the one-minute snippet is about things that they did in the course of their journey, which has helped them to be what they are, which has helped their companies to be what they are, uh, things that they have learned uh, at a professional and at a personal level, as well as things that each one of us can take away. And I understand from uh, Anjali and Amitabh that they are capturing all of these snippets of wisdom and then making this into a book which will be given at next year's IFF. So please make sure that you attend next year's IFF also because you need to collect your book. So we'll start, I know we've got a long session, so we'll start. It's difficult and each one of these speakers only speaks for a minute. That's the most important thing, so just a minute. Uh, what we'll try and do is we'll call these speakers uh, by name and in no particular other than the alphabetical order. Uh, we'll try and get mics across to wherever they are because it'll take a minute for them to come up to here and say something and go back. So we'll get mics to wherever they are and uh, hopefully we'll have an enjoyable session. Uh, no question and answer sessions. If you want to ask anything, please, you know, accost them when they are leaving the hall or during the course of the next couple of days. If you want to get some advice, uh, get them to consult for you uh, in terms of what you could do better, all of that stuff can be done uh, on the sidelines. So start Ajay Jain, who's the director of Basic Clothing. Can we get the mic to him? Sir, if you don't mind standing, that would help. Hi, everyone. I am Ajayan from Basic Clothing. I started my company 30 years ago. Currently, we have a portfolio of 70 EBOs across Reebok, uh, Pepe, and Madame. And we have a distribution business of Ray-Bins and uh, Lakshita and all the, across all many brands of around 100 crores. And our focus has always been on a secondary business. So tell us price. how you built this business. Tell us how you built the business. What, what is it that you did? differently. That would be useful. Our PR with the retailers was very high. Okay. PR with retailers, ah, so which also high. extends to long credit. Yes. Then, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Okay. No, no. And uh, good, excellent service, secondary focus driven. That all helps to build up the okay, business. Okay, good. So no stuffing the channel, secondary focus, great PR with retailers. Anything else, sir? I'm very honest in the working. Absolutely. So the fair company. dealings with all retailers. So thank you very much. So you can take away from that, all of this stuff. Anand Ayer, Anand Ayer, sorry. Anand Ayer is a CEO for Easy Buy, which is the Max Retail Division, part of the Landmark Group. So Anand, are you here? Yeah, uh, yeah. morning. Morning, everybody. I think uh, I represent uh, the, the youngest initiative of Landmark Group, which is Easy Buy. And as we saw in the morning, the huge opportunity in the smaller markets. So the Landmark created this format, especially for India, to penetrate these smaller markets. And as we entered the smaller market, there was a lot of challenges in terms of we have to innovate at every area. Now, our innovation started right from the you know, fiber to fashion ecosystem, where we created a lot of MSME uh, vendors who have grown with us from 50 machines to 200 machines, uh, because that's how we can deliver value and delight the customer. And the next was how do we you know, make our uh, format lit more express format where we are able to manage cost so that the profitability happens. Because today's forum is about DNA on profitability. A lot of people keep talking about valuation, but in Landmark, we believe on profitability. So the, there are a lot of innovations. I think in one minute, I cannot complete it. But I think, yeah, a lot of Great. process so innovation. The, yeah, so the three you. things we can take away is focus on small towns. Uh, the second is in terms of partnering with MSME suppliers mm -hmm. to make sure that they're able to get products out at affordable costs. And the third is to be able to run a tight operation uh, small formats which are extremely productive. So thanks, Anand. The, the next speaker is uh, Ananya Rajguru, 
who is the founder creative director of Misfit. Oh yeah. So Ananya is, you know, crafting style with construction. Is that what you said in your about us on your please stand if you don't mind. So we are still a fairly a new brand. We launched about a year ago and what has really worked for us was collaborating with the right people and within three months Vogue had contacted us for a cover shoot and <coughs> Madhuri Dikshit had worn our jeans. So after that we got a really good response and we were reaching out to the right customer market. So being present in front of the right market has something that has helped us. Great. So you do tailored uh, clothing? Uh, no, we do ready to wear. So we have a denim line and an active wear line. Okay, okay, sure. So great, uh, thank you very much Ananya. Uh, the speaker after this is uh, Aparna Thyagarajan, the co-founder and the chief product officer of Shobitham. Thanks Aparna. Hello everyone, a very good morning. Uh, co-founder Shobitham. Shobitham is one of the fastest growing D2C ethnic fashion brands serving customers, tens of thousands of customers across 40 plus countries. We represent the rich heritage textile arts and crafts of India from the length and breadth, unlike any other. We are here to disrupt the space with our rich technology stack. As you all know, the space is highly fragmented, so we are here to make a difference. And we provide Silkmark certified quality, global fast and free shipping. And I think that's the reason why we received 7,000 plus five-star reviews and an NPS of 71, 91, which is one of the best in the industry. And being so women tell us led, how you're different. Yes, uh, our unique selections. We work directly at the grassroots level. We disrupt the space. This space, the handloom arts and crafts, is the second largest industry after agriculture. Very archaic, and we are here to make a difference with our rich technology stuff. Great, great. Going One back into thing. tradition. Yes. And uh, what Achilles talked about. You know, we have a tradition which China doesn't. Agree, and we are here to preserve it while innovating. What you see is an example of that. Lovely. Thank you. And we are women-led, and we partnered with India's premier institute, Bits Pilani, and created the Shobitam Center for Women Entrepreneurship, which is the first of its kind in India. What the center aims- Round of applause, you know, for somebody who started, who's a startup and who started uh, entrepreneurship center. Yes, we started on Women's Day less than four years ago. And we have the center which aims at honing and building women entrepreneurs to close the gender gap, one women entrepreneur at a time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lovely. Uh, the next speaker is uh, uh, Apiksha Gupta, CEO of John Jacobs. A very good morning. Uh, I am the CEO of John Jacobs. John Jacobs today is a 700 crore uh, eyewear brand, uh, arguably the largest in the country uh, in the premium space. And we have been growing 60% year on year for three years straight. So the big takeaway and that I would love to share here is our investments were in the value chain upstream. That's what we uh, did. We work on this principle called mastery of material. So we invested specifically uh, not just with our manufacturers, we also went down to the parts. So we have a sta extremely standardized parts and raw material and machinery investment uh, because of which we've been able to be extremely agile during COVID. We did not cancel any orders. Uh, we were pat positive already from June after the first lockdown opened and that was because of our investments down upstream. Thank you. Thanks, Apiksha. I'm wearing John Jacobs, so it's testament. We have two and a half doing. million customers, by the way. <laughs> I'm one of those. Okay, now the next speaker is Arun Narayan, who is the VP category marketing and retail of Tanishk, an old colleague of mine from Titan. Thanks, Biju. Uh, allow me to stand next to you. <laughs> uh, morning, everyone. Biju, you know this, uh, uh, that historically at uh, Tanishk, we've always looked at areas where consumers have been underserved in our category, and that's how we've uh, created value. The last couple of years, uh, we got a lot of downtime thanks to COVID. So we doubled down on some of those areas and uh, under an approach that we called solve versus sell. Uh, there wasn't much of selling to be done in some of those uh, periods of uh, lockdown. So uh, some of that solving really helped us to come out of COVID uh, much stronger than uh, we entered. 
Uh, a learning that I'd like to leave behind and a realization is uh, perhaps value creation discussions sometimes get, sometimes they get a little seductive. Uh, there is another uh, perhaps boring but uh, equally important side of it uh, which we'd like to call value capture where sometimes, you know, tightening some uh, screws and hammering some nails helps in uh, not losing the plot. So I'd just like to so leave that. So one of the questions I think everybody is very keen to understand is, how do you get to be 30,000 crores or plus? <laughs> you just keep adding it one by one and then it adds up, Biju. <laughs> Good. So thank you. He's not going to give you any secrets uh, at all there in no terms secrets. of how to get there. Thanks. Thanks, Arun. Uh, the next person that we have is Arun Kumar Nath, who's the CFO, Fashion and Lifestyle Reliance Retail. Good morning, all. Uh, my biggest learning, or rather our learning, over the last uh, three, four years has been to unlearn everything that I've learned in the 24 years prior to this last three years. That has been the biggest learning. And now, and once you unlearn, what do you do? You have to get the, get the drift of what's happening externally, right? You need to understand what, uh, what the external ecosystem is expecting from you. So that was, that was the thing. Like, you unlearn everything, get to know what's happening externally, move with that, while remaining focused on your uh, long-term objective. So that, that has been the story in the last three, four years. And the brands and the formats that have done it very well have emerged successful after COVID. And there are brands that have lost out because they could not really get the trip. They get, got stuck to the thought processes that they have learned. No, but over just tell time. me, as, uh, as a CFO of fashion and uh, lifestyle, uh, which Akhilesh leads, obviously you all have you know, grown at a rapid, blistering pace in the last three to four years. So what's special about COVID that helped you to be able to grow so much? So COVID presented a lot of opportunities for many brands, including for Lions Retail. So basically, you are looking at how the consumer behavior is changing, what are the new requirements that are coming from the consumer side, how can you really exploit some of the markets, and also understand the changing profile of consumers. Now, where consumers would want to shop, how do you want to shop? Don't waste time when there is COVID, and just respond to the changing behavior. So that's what a lot of brands that emerged successful have done during this period. Sure. Thanks. Thank you very much, Arun. Sorry? You, you can answer. In fact, you're not part of this group, so why didn't you be? Simple. I think COVID was our biggest uh, growth opportunity uh, because the competition and the rest of the industry kind of went into hibernation. So uh, it was an opportunity that we picked up. Uh, we grew real estate, uh, expansion of network, with competition two years behind you, uh, I think that was the biggest opportunity. So good, I can tell you that, you know, Reliance is all, I was there in 2008-9 when the global financial crisis happened, and I can tell you that Reliance used it to its advantage in being able to do several things which competition did not do. And uh, that's the advantage of being a cash-rich company. Okay, the next question is, uh, the next person rather, is uh, Ashwini Sh uh, Sheth, who's the CEO and founder of Denison India. Uh, do we have, uh, can we get a mic to Ashwini, please? Thank you. Yeah, hi everyone, uh, this is Ashwini. And uh, I have been running a Denison for last eight years. And Denison, uh, everything changed for, uh, changed for me in 2019 when uh, I was just running, uh, like I, I started in 2014 basically and I was just going to markets, buying fabrics and just selling them out. But then nothing was working out for me. In 2019, when I saw that there's a lot of dump is happening, I just sold them out at whatever the price is and then I got a growth, a bit of growth and suddenly some people came, out, came to me and g started giving me about the data. So this is where I started understanding how data helped me out to grow, right? Then I got to know okay, how workwear uh, as, a, uh, as a trend was, as a, was a big gap in compared to casual wears. So this is where I started my journey and made my uh, Denison as a focus or towards workwear. And then again, getting into more into depth, uh, 
I started what I can do more into it. So I focused on functionalities like anti-stain, uh, antibacterial, order-free, thermostatic, and then again, then again, I got more deeper into it. Then I thought, okay, what are the functionalities I can make? Then I started doing working on waste flex, and then it got more into it. In 2022, again, I, I thought, okay, what I can do more into it. So again, I got into hemp clothing you know, to start a sustainable collection into it, adding up to the portfolio. So this is how a brand goes, and uh, we were doing the, we were witnessing a good growth, and we did almost 100% year-on-year growth in that, and we have shipped more than uh, more than a half of a million orders till now. Thank good. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So here's a good example of how he's been able to add value, which goes beyond design, because he said design is commoditized. So why don't I get into value which is beyond design, performance coatings, new, new finishing, et cetera, et cetera. The next person is Charit Narasimhan, who is the CEO of Indian Terrain. So good. It doesn't take too long to get from Chennai to here. Yeah. Morning, everyone. Uh, I had a menswear clothing brand, which is 22 years old today. Today was young today. Uh, two big takeaways for me over the last 17 years since I started, uh, and especially in the last two years of COVID. One, uh, double down on what you're strongest at. Uh, I use a famous word in my organization, which is called feed the strong and starve the weak. It's a little uh, outrageous to say, but I have seen it work for every part of what we do, whether it is for people, whether it is for markets, whether it is for your product. Far too much time goes in propping up the weak, and far less time goes in putting your effort behind your strongest. That was the biggest learning over the last many years, and the more we double down on that, the best results. The second big learning is don't keep chasing something for ego. Uh, so quickly learn to drop something if it's not working. So if it's an expansion, if it's a new market, if you think it's not right, drop it fast and move ahead. It's a very cool thing in startup world today to say fail fast, etc. In the real world, it's not that easy, but that's my biggest two learnings. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. Support the strongest and don't get wedded to what you think is not a successful formula. The next uh, person that we have is an old friend, Darpan Kapoor. So Darpan is, of course, the chairman of, uh, of, let's see, the name of the company now is called, it's always, uh, Darpan is the chairman of Capsons anyway still. Uh, and he's also the vice chairman of the CII. That's the old this thing, and uh, me and Vipin heads this company. Uh, the, my uh, one line of what I gave was that growth starts with working with what you have. So you will never have enough if you keep saying this, that if we'll have this, and then the growth will happen. Growth never happens with uh, expectation that if I'll have the money, if I'll have the opportunity, only then the growth will happen. We grew when we had nothing, no funding, no finance, no experience in retail, no one to guide us. We started with a small shop of 1,300 square feet. Now we have grown up up to 4 lakh 20,000 square feet stores, uh, square feet area. We have 28 stores, two more coming. Soon we'll be reaching 30 stores. And none of the store is, what, five, six, or 10,000 square feet. All the stores are 25,000 plus. And we are expanding just because of this thing that we learned the business of our own. We did not borrow the expertise. We did not spend money on, uh, on high salaries. We created our own skill set. We created our own team, which is loyal, which has worked with us, and this is how it happens. So my take is that what you have, if you do not have anything, there's a whole, whole lot of opportunity of creating many other things. Thanks. Thank you, Darpan. And I think it's a classic example uh, Chandigarh based uh, retailer, uh, self grown, they built everything themselves, uh, focused on the uh, initially on the relatively more premium customer, over time actually segmented a retail business to cater to different kinds of customers, uh, was a great customer of ours when I was at Titan and uh, really has helped a lot of new brands to be able to establish themselves. He's being very modest when he says what he has just said.
Thank you, Darpan. Mangla, who is the... Uh, who's from where? Ah, sorry. You're from? Uh, that's me. Oh, okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Deepak, CEO of Dress Me. Right now, if you go to retail stores, one of the main reason is uh, you believe that you will not be able to find perfect fit or good looking clothes uh, on, in online. You don't know how you will look in those clothes. Okay, so we are solving this problem using virtual try-on and we believe in around three years, almost most of the market from offline will be captured by the online. Okay, and with the recent breakthroughs in generative AI, the technology has become so good that we have been able to generate almost perfectly realistic results of virtual try-on. Okay, so we have already generated some results on some celebrities and also for some honorable speakers here. So I'd like my friend to present results with all of you. Uh, these are the results on Emma Watson that we have generated with our algorithm. Okay, so as you can see, these are looking perfectly realistic. I believe there is no other company in the world that is able to give so good results. Okay, and we are also showing results generated on speakers right now. Kunal, please show the results generated on Salisher. Yeah, these are the results on Salisher. <laughs> And Let's we also Shailesh. have results for Vinit, sir. You're doing very smart here, Shailesh. I must say, what about Anish? I can see Anish yeah, also in some. Yeah. Vinit. There are no rumors, which is good friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, we believe this is the technology uh, and this is the future. This is, I believe, it will completely revolutionize the way we see the fashion these days. Thank you. Thankfully, he rendered them with clothes on. So that's the biggest advantage that we have. Uh, uh, the speaker after that is uh, Aditya Agarwal, who's the founder of Campus Sutra. Hi, thanks, Biju, for having me here. Uh, I am the co-founder of Campus Sutra. I'm Aditya Agarwal. Yeah. And, um, uh, we are the biggest bootstrap fashion brand in the country. We are about 350 crores in size. We started not far from here in a 400 square feet building in, uh, and it was haunted. There was supposedly Atma living in the building. <laughs> and today we, and we took it because it was only 8,000 rupees per square, 8,000 rupees rent per month. So, and today we have the, one of the biggest G2E setup, setup in terms of operations. We have 1.5 lakh square feet warehouse space. So from Atma into the building, we became Atma Nirbhar today. So <laughs> that's our story. And uh, uh, we've always challenged the status quo. You know, when we started out, we looked at how fashion ecosystem and how fashion supply chain was done. And we made 50 small and big changes into the supply chain where we've been able to, you know, deliver four competitive advantages for us. One is our mind to market is 21 days. If I like the shirt that you are wearing, I can bring it to the market in 21 days. We sell everything in 60 days. Our sell through is, our sell -through is about 99%. And we deliver uh, consistent customer experience across the eight years that, been, that we've been in existence. So frugality and challenging status quo, these are the two main learnings that I have. And that's my one minute. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. So obviously that, you know, when you talk about mind to market 21 days, and uh, full price sell through of 99%. I think, you know, given the fact that you started from haunted beginnings, those thoughts I'm sure will haunt a lot of people in the fashion industry. Uh, the next is Dhruv Bogra, country manager forever new. Dhruv's also an ex colleague from uh, Titan. <clears throat> Thanks, Biju. Great to see you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's been an amazing journey for Forever New. It's a bridge to luxury brand uh, for women uh, from Melbourne, Australia. So we design and we manufacture over the world and deliver into India. So obviously, we have uh, a lot of challenges with imports and also meeting the right kind of price segment. So, Dhruv, forget about all the yeah. fashion. Lots yeah. of people have spoken about fashion. Okay. Tell us about your bicycle ride across the Americas. Oh, okay. <laughs> that seems to be the hot topic every time. 
Well, uh, in 2016, um, I quit my job at Adidas. I was the retail director there. And I went on my bicycle, uh, solo and unsupported, for about 400 days from Alaska to Peru. Uh, it was a Alaska journey. Alaska to Peru. Peru, yeah. It was 15,000 kilometers <laughs> with about um, 40 kilos of gear, uh, with an elevation gain of 250,000 feet, which is like climbing Mount Everest seven times. So it was an epochal journey, and uh, it had a tremendous influence on my life. And I came back with a lot of learnings. I composed some into a book called Grid, Gravel, and Gear, which incidentally became among the top 100 selling uh, titles in crossword bookstores across national and international titles. Congratulations. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. I have a second book also, which has just come out last year. Which this is, is going day. from Peru to Alaska? Uh, <laughs> no, this is about my Himalayan expeditions, okay. which everyone keeps joking on Facebook with me saying, when do you work? <laughs> so uh, I keep telling them that, you know, uh, it can be very deceptive. <laughs> so yes, um, I, I think one of the things that I want to do share, uh, post on the book is, uh, and my journey, is the whole piece about grit and resilience that emanated from that journey and how uh, I was able to apply that uh, as a life lesson during the worst time during COVID. And I think uh, a lot of things like humility and being able to deploy a certain amount of courage to people to cope with what they were facing uh, came from that journey. 70% uh, of revenue comprises of women. 65% of our leadership is women. And 35% are young mothers. So during COVID, this was a really tough challenge. And we had these girls in the stores. We had girls from the Northeast in Bangalore and Delhi who were being told to come back home from their parents and the hometowns. And they said, don't worry about us. The company is taking care of us. We are safer here with this company. Then we are back home. And they stuck on and they worked here. And you know their uh, devotion to their duty and their love for the brand, I think, rubbed off on consumers. We grew 300% over 2019. Our profits grew by 400% in these last three years. And I attribute it to the women. You know, the, the leadership skills that they all displayed at decision-making levels, the grit and resilience that I'm talking about, they, they really displayed that. So I think the biggest value creation in the last three years has been women empowerment in the business and a company run by women for women. So thank you. That's the biggest Lovely. one. Lovely. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, the next speaker that we have is Dilip Kapoor. Dilip I, is the uh, um, is a founder, president, a creator of the brand called High Design, and the business around it. Okay, um, look around everyone, and I see lots of incredibly smart people in figuring out profits. I think it took me 20 years to learn how to do my PL. Dilip, account. you and I are both Gen Z. You know what Anisha <laughs> asked? So don't uh, look around and see others. <laughs> okay. Um, I think uh, I found it interesting when Akhilesh, whom I had actually never met, um, mentioned about uh, figuring out your identity. Um, I think that's what we've been most concentrated on is figuring out the identity of high design. And I've always thought of high design as a person. I think it's a person, and we need to figure out who that person is. And the tendency, as in all of us, is to make it fatter and fatter and further. And then you have to keep cutting it back and cutting it back and making it narrow. And um, first thing is, I think we have to figure out is heritage. It didn't take long to figure out we were not from Milan or London or Paris. We were just a small town Pondicherry boy. And so we figured that out. So what is it that made us special? What is it that makes the brand Pondicherry person? Um, after that, I think we were forced to keep his identity, do a lot of things ourselves. So we got more and more vertically integrated uh, from doing stupid things, not only like making your own leather, but also making your own buckles because we wanted them to be brass like no one else would do. Um, things like that. Um, I think this figuring out of what your identity is, who you are, took us longer and longer because it got, got into everything. I mean, it, you know, it really, the person you hire 
uh, has to fit into you, otherwise they drive you nuts. You know, so everywhere, the store experience, the store identity, uh, we couldn't take off the rack anything. And we ended up everything, customizing everything and making a lot of mistakes. Uh, so Dilip actually has a fetish for this brand identity. He kind of works <laughs> very hard at it, make sure that nothing goes which doesn't pass his eagle eye. And if it doesn't meet those exacting standards that he has set, he won't accept it. How did you expand this into hospitality? Well, I think that was a hobby more than anything else. That was just fun. Um, it's an expensive hobby, but <laughs> nevertheless. Uh, no, I think when you have an identity, it actually, I mean, the profitability actually comes quite automatically because you do get a larger margin. I think that's uh, profitability has been less of a problem. I think the bigger problem is growth because you're concentrating more on, you know, brand and identity and not so much on the business end of it. I think that was, would be the uh, problem and a failure Good. part of it. Thanks. Thanks, Dilip. Thank you very much. Round of applause to one of the legends of the, of the brand industry. Uh, way back in 87 when we started Titan, we always used to look to Dilip to see how exactly Dilip had built high design and uh, learned a lot from the way he built the brand. So thank you, Dilip, for that. Uh, the next speaker that we have is Gopa Kumar of uh, Bima Jewels. <coughs> Talk to us about the pivot that you've done in a brand which is so old. Right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, thanks, Biju, for having me here. Uh, I represent Bima Jewels, which is a 98-year-old uh, legacy brand. And we have operations spread predominantly in South India, also in UAE. Uh, we are expanding, uh, definitely uh, into large format stores and uh, looking at other parts of the country. Just, just to answer that, and I'm going to stick to the script, uh, Biju, that is a story, a minute, and I've kind of rehearsed it on this Bangalore traffic, and people must be wondering, was I muttering at them, you know, for overtaking and things like that. But nevertheless, um, you know, this was, uh, my story is about, uh, you know, how you can collaborate well with uh, other partners who are in the other industries, like services industries, and get great insights, which you could use for securing your profitability and your business. So we have been transforming and we've been bringing in a lot of technology in a very, uh, let's say, tepid way, uh, so that it's acceptable. Uh, just at the backdrop of COVID, uh, when we were getting into uh, you know, stores opening up and all the regulation and rules, you know, all of us as retailers, we've experienced uh, figuring out the rules every single day and trying to run our stores profitably. And that's what matters. Uh, so we were, I was really thinking along with my team, you know, uh, would consumers really come and buy jewelry now? Because, you know, basic existence and food and grocery and all of that is what is so important. And I incidentally used to work with Future Group earlier, leading food and grocery, and I came into jewelry. And so I was wondering if I was in the right profession or not. Uh, it so happened that, uh, you know, I was talking to one of our uh, partners who runs a large uh, uh, matrimonial site. And we got this insight that, uh, there was an uptick in terms of activity rate of 30% more uh, profiles getting uploaded uh, into the site. And also, you know, people were really scouting and looking at, uh, you know, uh, getting the right match, obviously. This insight uh, and the rising gold prices, you know, uh, the gold metal is a precious metal, you know, it just rose up post-COVID. And uh, uh, obviously it was a concern that we were thinking consumers would not come to us because A, Wedding was a question mark, which is the mainstay of the business. 25% of the business really comes from wedding and large ticket purchases. And also, uh, you know, uh, the gold prices would be kind of a deterrent for consumers coming into our stores. But we ran an initiative along with our agency. Uh, we came out with a advanced, smart advance purchase plan, which was basically giving consumers a window of 11 months wherein they could come and, you know, block the rate so the gold prices, they would be insulated to that extent. And also they could, because of this issue in the market of when would the wedding happen, would we get an you know, opportunity to do so or not. So the 11 month window really gave them that opportunity to fix the gold rate, uh, also choose a timing wherein they could come and build the product and take it home. And that allowed us uh, that 25% to be secured. 
and 25% is what it takes in the jewelry business to really break even, and the rest is all, you know, on top of that. So that helped us, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I could see Arun taking copious notes while you were busy talking about this new scheme. Uh, thanks, Gopa. Thanks. Uh, the next uh, speaker that we have is Indranath Sengupta, who is a founder and CEO of a brand I see all over, which is Companero. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Indranath Sengupta, and uh, you know, Biju, thank you for your kind words about uh, Companero. It's uh, relatively, we are a new brand. I started in 2014. First, I would like to thank everyone for their great insights because you know this has been such a good learning experience for, for me, learning from the stalwarts of the industry. Uh, for Companero, you know, when I started the brand, I knew nothing about um, making a brand or nothing about the retail industry. I was quite naive actually because all I had was, all I focused was, was making a unique product. We focused rigorously on making a unique product language, unique design language, unique identity. And uh, once we had that, then we started around making a brand around it and we started from a small kiosk which is about 50 square feet right here in Bangalore. And now uh, we have around 25 stores across the country. So EBS. tell us a little more about, you know, building out that unique design identity. Dilip's got one approach to building out uh, his leather brand in terms of a design identity. How did you think about it? Uh, actually, uh, that was a, a good thought process that we had that why did we need another leather brand in the country? Because we already had nice leather brands in the country. There was high design, there was another leather brand. So we thought if we have to make something, it has to be different from them. There is no point making a product and uh, which is available in the market. So we set around making a product that is a completely different design language and whoever looks at Componero today in the market can probably vouch for the fact that it's something different, not similar to the uh, a different brand's design language. And we still stick to that. I think that has not been replicated. We have been lucky with that. But every day is a learning and we are learning through it. That's, that's one of the Thank insights. you. Thank you, Indranath. Thank you so much. And I think it's a great story of, you know, Build a brand, build a business around the brand. And there are several companies, and I think we'll hear in the evening more about this from the Titan stable. Uh, the next speaker that we have is uh, Jacqueline Kapoor, who's the president of Aisha Fashion. We have Jacqueline, or, ah, Jacqueline's there. Can we get a mic to her? Good morning, everybody. My name is Jacqueline Kapoor, and I'm the CEO and founder of Ayesha Accessories. Um, I think in the space of fast fashion, we all have the same problem. There's always somebody who's cheaper than us. Uh, with Amazon offering thousands or even millions of options, how do we stand out? Um, and I think the key is here to build an emotional connectivity with your customer. So how do you do that? You do that the same way as you do that with your family, with your peers, with your friends. And um, as Dilip said, we have to have a person, but I think we do have to have a tribe, we have to have a family. So how do I do this? First of all, I think we have to be good listeners now. All our customers have a voice now. They can give you reviews, they can give you, um, they can destroy you by a bad uh, Instagram post. So we have to be listening and we have to implement what they have to say to us. So we have to offer a connection. Then we have to share the same values and the same visions. Now, what values could that be? As we saw before, it could be sustainability, it could be social, um, social issues like women empowerment, et cetera, et cetera. But then we have to be very careful that we don't lie because that can backfire and it can be found out in one simple Google search. So if you promote power for women, don't cheat on your wife. If you um, talk about sustainability, don't mass produce in China because people find out very quickly and then you lost your customer. The next thing is you don't want to be the cheapest because that somebody else is doing for you already, but you cannot also be the most expensive. Don't overprice you have to be fi financially empathetic to your customer. 
And um, so don't lie. I said already the last one, make it fun. You know, Sorry. the young, make it fun. Okay. Uh, your buying experience, whether that's online or offline, should be an experience. It should be, you know, our generation Z and Alpha customers have a very, very short attention span. So how do we capture that? Well, a little bit tongue-in-cheek promotions and marketing things would be helpful. Um, and don't be the boring old uncle who tells you what to do, when to do, and with whom to do. And I Thank think you. That's Thanks, Jacqueline. That was Asian. you know you. a masterclass in the four P's of marketing, as they say. Uh, every single aspect of it was covered. Uh, uh, the next speaker that we have is Jigar Patel, who's the founder and CEO of G3 Fashions. Do we have Jigar around? Can we get a mic across there? Hello. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jigar Patel. Uh, this is, I'm not a founder, but this is my grandfather, third generation business by the name of G3 Plus store we have in Surat. And also we have started online business in 2010 by the name of g3fashions.com. So I have here everybody, the last speaker, I forgot the name, but she was telling about the experience, customer experience and uh, the <coughs> retail customer experience and about the wow feeling of the retail. So I just want to share uh, to one minute about what we did in 2010. We have lots of NRI clients in uh, Surat, so based in Surat. So we found out one biggest problem of the NRI clients that they want to shop Indian ethnic clothes from India, but they have a biggest problem. How can get the right fit, the right collection, and the trust factor was very important. So for that, we started giving customer a video shopping experience live from our store. We connect, we start our store at morning seven o'clock and close at night one o'clock. So we connect the customers in the morning also and the night also, our US customers. So that is our core strength. And we give customized service that Personalized service is very important. So nowadays the product is common. Ethnic Sherwan you get everywhere, Chaniya Choli, Sadi, everywhere. But the customer experience we put it and our rating on Trustpilot is 4.9. So that we have achieved and we want to sell customer experience there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jigar. Thank you very much. Get your store to go across the world. Uh, the next is, uh, next speaker rather, is Lubina Shapurwala, who is the partner Mustang socks and accessories. Do we have Lubina here? Ah, there she is. Good morning, everybody. Oh, my name is Lubaina Shaparwala. Um, I represent Mustang Socks. I'm a partner at Mustang Socks. We basically manufacture socks, one million pairs. Um, a little bit of our story, just quick, quickly before how we started. Uh, we started with uh, um, 500 rupees. Uh, uh, today we have 5,000 retailers offline throughout the country. Uh, my senior founder is there. Uh, we're two women who ran, run the business, um, 5,000 retailers throughout the country. We started because we saw a gap and there were only nylon socks uh, initially available 30 years ago. Um, so we introduced cotton, we introduced cotton lycra, so we did a lot of innovation. We went uh, direct as a manufacturer to retails. That's how we built between 8,000 retailers through the country. Uh, we employ uh, about 450 people. We make about a million pairs a month, and of which 45% are women throughout the ladder. Uh, we're based in Maharashtra, um, uh, a head office in Mumbai, manufacturing, manufacturing Palgar, sustainability, diversity, and, uh, and building systems is something that's extremely close to our heart. We're um, implementing SAP B1 as we speak. So um, that's our journey, that's a few learnings, and I've Thank done you. my one minute. Thank you. Thank you. So as you understand, product innovation, distribution, expansion, uh, lots of things which all of us do. So I think important things to take away. What I'd request everybody to try and keep it tight, because we are running out of time and we're running well out of schedule. So please try and keep it tight in terms of what you say. Uh, the next is... Uh, Manu Ch Manohar Chatlani, so who's the MD of Soch Apparels? Manu, I remember you sitting somewhere there. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Soch started as a curated model, like everybody else, buying from the market. And over a period of time, we morphed and we changed into a highly collaborative, 
model. We have a big uh, variety of suppliers. There's an endless uh, thousands of people who are creating great things. We collaborate with them, our design team, and they work together. So we get a huge, uh, dif we get different tastes and a totally different look for each and every season. Unlike some of the brands which get sort of stuck into their own uh, speciality or niche or whatever you call it. So we are able to change very fast when we see something new. Immediately we collaborate with these guys. We work with the uh, best of manufacturers and we follow the same practices, quality control, uh, PPT, Q uh, quality control completely, our own sizing, our own brands, exclusivity. So we're able to offer, I think, a pretty uh, different and a good selection to our customers. Thanks. Thanks, Manu. Collaborative design outsourced manufacture without compromising on quality. Uh, incidentally, the origin of his brand name, many of us think deep and loud for it. But in his case, he decided to take his wife's name and the family name and then combine the two together. So Shobha Chatrani became Soch. The next person that we have is Manish Podar, who's the founder and creative director, House of Rare. Ah. Thanks, Manish. Rare rabbit, we've often heard. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me here. Thank you, sir. Uh, my few messages from my learning, uh, growing this brand in the last seven years, if I negate COVID, it's just about five and a half, six years. Uh, we had to run a 400 crore business today and in fashion with all the competition and all availability around. I started this brand only with a thought. Uh, I come from a fashion background, uh, not academically, but by choice. And I said, we must create something. We had formal wear, we had denim wear, and let's say, let's create a smart wear in the middle which didn't uh, exist uh, in one place. It exists with various brands. Uh, the gap was realized. The gap is needed to be realized in businesses uh, to be formed. Uh, the second step that we took was once the gap was found and we realized that our customer behavior was running at almost 40% of repeats, uh, both online and offline. And the third step, we uh, second step on that call we did is we went bullish uh, because uh, my veteran, uh, my dad, my mentor, he always told me business is equal to opportunity and it comes for a small moment. So when it comes, grab it, otherwise it's gone like a train. So we are uh, pretty rapid uh, this year and the next year. So that's the second one. The third one, I'm, uh, someone asked about Zen Z and I'm very traditional. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, made in India is the next way to go. Uh, I have done some overseas business all my life. Actually, most of my life I've been overseas, but I feel that it, the next decade or decades to come is India. So we believe in yes. the made in India concept. Not just made, but uh, it's a small and a large term at the same time made in India. It's very small when it's in the label. And it's very large when you showcase a very large representation of brand that, wow, this is made in India. And that's what I would uh, see sure. India to become. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much, Manish. Here. The next speaker is uh, Nitesh Kanchan, CEO of Sephora India and the uh, CDO of Arvind Fashion. Hi. So I can see him in the back. Quickly, without wasting too much time, I think what worked for us in Sephora was uh, we believed in the team. Uh, diversity is one thing that we were chasing. And we also did what uh, was supposed to be done. We sold what was selling. So these are the few takeaways from us. Good. From Sephora. Thank That's you. Thank you for keeping that short. Uh, the next is uh, Preeti Gupta, CBO of Nika Fashion. Hi. Hi, Biju. This side. Yeah, hi. Ah. So I think uh, to keep it really short, uh, Nika has always believed in adding value to the consumer life and really seeing how we can educate women more, whether it's around beauty or fashion. So we actually launched a brand called Naked, which was launched purely in COVID time. So come COVID and we actually joined the organization and say, okay, 
let's start a brand. So I think a couple of things that we got right, and we are actually the top few brands in the category today, is that one, it's really entrenched in consumer truth. So it was very clear that this con category is extremely complicated. Consumer don't really understand what lingerie is about, how, what to wear, where to wear, their own body co conversations are not enough. So really being very, very true to what the consumer wants is something that we've been great at. And second, I think our execution. Um, like, you know, Jacqueline was saying, consumers don't have the time. It's less than two seconds you're looking at an ad. So whatever you're communicating has to be so tight and so to the point that it really comes across. And that's the two things, I think, which has really led Thank to you. our success. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Preeti. Thanks for keeping it short. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Rahul Balla, who is a founder and CEO of Latin Quarters. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rahul. I'm the co-founder of a women's wear brand, Latin Quarters, with over 5 million consumers. Uh, for us, I guess our journey, and especially the last few years, uh, what we have understood and learned is that we have to stay focused on a consumer. We have to uh, believe in what we do well, and not always let the outcome define the process. So a lot of times, we take risks, and if things don't go as per us, we are very easy to change. I think uh, that's something, in, especially in the fashion business, you have to believe in your process and just uh, stick to your identity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rahul. Rajesh Jain, uh, MD of Lacoste, a legendary brand. Good morning, friends. Uh, I would not talk about the brand. I would talk about uh, the learnings that I got from retail. Uh, all of us, I think, would agree that retail is very challenging. It could uh, actually be very, very disheartening at times. It could be very, uh, it could make you disoriented at times. So to take care of this thing, to remain focused, I define my own parameters. I call them five pillars. I said if I uh, aim for those five pillars, I should be able to get through the retail challenges. And those five pillars are top line, bottom line, expansion slash growth, talent development, and customer delight. Everything else, as per me, is merely incidental. I think in retail, if we aim for these five pillars, A, we will be able to deliver it to our all stakeholders, which would include your shareholders, your suppliers, your customers, your uh, colleagues, your uh, brand, almost everything or everybody will get the delivery of what they want. Thank, Thank you. you. That was my one minute. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Rajesh. The chartered accountant in him speaks. Doesn't seem to be around. Rakesh Jalipalli, VP Azot Reliance Retail. Hi, hi. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> I represent uh, one of the youngest brands, uh, Azot, which has launched recently. We launched in September. It's a one-stop destination for uh, fashion and lifestyle. We are catering to the growing needs of the millennials and uh, Gen Z that uh, we heard a lot about today. Uh, and we have actually used technology as a big lever, uh, which is a great differentiating factor for this segment. We already are working on product innovations as well. But uh, technology like self-checkouts, then smart trial rooms, these have been a great differentiator in terms of uh, giving an elevated consumer experience. And this uh, I mean, this uh, Gen Z category of customers really love to be independent. So we built uh, the store around uh, elevated customer experience, and uh, I think that's the way forward as per uh, what we feel. Thanks. Thanks, Rakesh. You must try and tie up with IFF to take everybody on a retail study tour. Yes, yes. In fact, our store is right beside in 1MG. <laughs> yeah. So please feel right. free to visit the store. Rohit Aneja, Director of Paragon Apparels. We have Rohit, ah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Hi, uh, we are, good, uh, good morning, we are uh, Be Blue. We have launched a brand which uh, started in uh, Shows of Lake Como. And Shows of Lake Como, a uh, sustainable, made to fit women's brand. Uh, we are trying to build a sustainable and a slow, conscious brand and launching soon in India as well. 
Uh, right now, we are available in markets in Germany and Italy. Uh, I just leave you with one proposition here that when we ask people, we ask consumers to buy less, can a brand be profitable still? Can, can a brand ask to be st still in the business of profitability and making more sales? And we are asking consumers to buy less. Thank you. Thought provoking for all of us who are busy trying to maximize sales. What does slow fashion mean? Next speaker is Rohit Singh, COO of PVH Arvind Fashion. Hi, good morning. Uh, my story in a minute would revolve around, you know, we lead to internationally well-renowned brands like Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger. What we focused on is uh, finding people who are every time smarter and more intelligent than the existing lot of people and going across the country and hiring them. And we've built an entire, uh, this whole setup around that one uh, focused approach of finding the best people for us. And 80 rupees per square feet per day is the result so far. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rohit. Building smarter teams. Speaker after that is uh, Sandeep Pal, CEO of Taswa, which is AB uh, Burra Fashion. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, what a fascinating day so far. Uh, at Taswa, we are a new brand, a little over one year old. What we truly believe is that uh, being obsessed with the product is very, very critical, and we uh, spend a lot of time polishing our proposition on the product. One example of that is uh, typically when you think of a bangala, it is supposed to be very stiff in a collar. I'm wearing one, which is very comfortable, as comfortable as a Western jacket, which most of you are wearing. And uh, we've spent a lot of time and energy in polishing our proposition. We continue to do so. We are a work in progress. But Testimony, one year old brand, uh, we are a brand which is getting 91% net promoter score and about 40% in repeat business. So that's how we believe uh, we will be able to win this game and continue to work Thank on you. this. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, speaker after that is uh, Sanjeev Rao, who's the CEO of Being Human Clothing. Thank you, Biju. I'll uh, not take much of your time. Uh, as the name says, being human. Uh, well, uh, quickly, just to let you know that there are two circles that we straddle. One is the conscious circle, and one is the business circle. While we talk about efficiencies of retail, good fashion, affordable fashion, all of that is on one side that we any which ways do. Uh, the larger motive for us as a brand is, uh, in fact, my COO is sitting right here. And uh, in about two hours back, we were sitting in my room and telling him that, hey, in this AOP, we need to build in an addition of about 25 crores because we have so many surgeries to do and so many schools to sponsor. So uh, we are a purpose-led brand, and the purpose for us is to give back. Uh, that's what uh, we believe has created the stickiness with uh, the Gen Z and the millennial uh, consumers that we serve. Uh, we have seen phenomenal growth in the last one and a half, two years, uh, not only in India, but also in geographies outside India, like Canada, Dubai, Bangladesh, uh, so much so that some of the leading brands uh, abroad, uh, like Nordstrom and Halts, are wanting us to be a part of their chain, purely because, uh, not, uh, not because we do fashion or anything. There might be people who do better fashion than us here today. But it's because of that one purpose that we serve, which is giving back. Thank you. Thanks, Sanjeev. Being human literally is about giving back. Uh, uh, speaker after that is uh, Satyan Mamaya, who is the CEO of Celio. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I represent Celio. It's a French fashion brand. I think what motivated our transformation journey was a comment from a French office at that time saying, India is the market of the future always. And I thought uh, maybe we, we had not done justice to the brand. And, and when we saw, we saw the... Uh, we were growing at half the market growth rate, volatile PNL, EBITDA, negative. I think what really worked was uh, putting together a vision, a goal, and the four growth pillars, uh, starting with winning with the consumer, winning with people. And I think being consumer obsessed, executing without excuse, the team has flawlessly executed on the four priorities. And I think execute without excuse mindset has helped us not only turn around uh, to be profitable, but growing 3x the market growth rate. So, Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Satyan. Uh, Shruti Malhotra, Group Head Quest Retail and Lotus Retail. 
I thought I saw Shruti in the morning somewhere. Yeah, hi. Ah, yes. hi, my name is Shruti, and actually I'm the Body Shop uh, CEO for uh, South Asia. Um, uh, it's good that beauty is now part of fashion, so that's good. Uh, uh, I would say that being in the industry for 30 years, uh, it's all about uh, you know working with courage and have been the driving seat, looking ahead, and not really looking behind through the rear view min uh, mirror and being uncertain. Uh, for us, the one thing that has been able to retain, uh, I mean, for us to be profitable all throughout these years is the fact that we've never scaled back on retail. Uh, we are an international beauty brand, and so that's a big high to the uh, UK committee here. Uh, we've never scaled back on retail. Uh, whenever retail has been at its lowest, we've really punted on expansion, and expansion the smaller towns and cities. And uh, this is something that has really gained, uh, given us really good advantage in the market. Uh, A, the growth of, uh, the, the cost of growth is much less. Uh, lower rentals, and of course, great profitability. So I would say that uh, you know, if you have to be in the market of growth, you have to really build on expansion, because that's what India is all about. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Shruti. Uh, the, the next... Uh, sure. The next speaker is Suparna Mitra, CEO for Watches and Wearables at Titan. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, just to take that one minute, I think uh, we are all in the business of fashion. We spend a lot of time on product, on supply chain, merchandising, manufacturing, retail. Uh, one tip, okay. personally spend time with two sets of people, consumers and employees. Personally spend time. Do not outsource customer inciting to market research professionals who don't really get your category. And that amount of time that you spend with different consumer segments, as well as different cohorts of your employees, is going to pay you back like 1,000 times. Great. Thanks, Subarna. Thank you very much. Customer insights. Glean yourself. Uh, we might have to cut short the session because they're running well beyond schedule. I'll call the last speaker, Vineet Gautam. Vineet, if you could quickly. I think uh, two parts to this. Uh, I'll just take m not too much time. Two learnings. I think uh, build a strong organization culture that resonates your brand, uh, that resonates the cult category and the business that you are in. Because end of the day, the, it's a team that's going to deliver. So for us, uh, it's been always the team. Uh, th 13 years plus in the country, one of the strongest teams in the, in the country we have in the fashion space. And I think uh, that's very important. The other is hire people who are smarter than you. I think it's very, very critical. We don't know, have all the answers, I think, but they have the answers. So invest in people, uh, build a strong culture. And the last, stay true to your brand promise. Don't try to do all categories. I think this is the biggest challenge I see everyone going into everything. Uh, Sometimes less is more, and I think that is what I leave this at. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vineet. Uh, I know we've disappointed some of the audience because we had to kind of look over some of the speakers, but they're going to be around. You can catch them later in the middle of the conversation and figure out what exactly to do. But I know we're running terribly late in terms of the schedule. So thank you very much. I hope you all took down notes uh, from all the insights that you've gleaned from the several people who've been here and have spoken today about what helped them to build themselves and their businesses. Thank you very much.